Thank you. My name is Carl Weiderquist. I'm from Cassopolis, Michigan, and I support a universal, unconditional, basic income in cash for everyone, because I believe that no one has a right to come between another person and the resources they need to survive. That doesn't sound very controversial. It should, shouldn't be controversial, the idea that, that no one should be able to come between another person and the resources they need to survive. Animals have that. Uh, animals have that. Early humans had that. For hundreds of thousands of years, people were free to go and access the resources of the earth to find what they needed to survive, and they were free to match their wits on their own terms and make their own decisions about what they would do with the earth. And even today, for our criminals, uh, we, don't, we don't block them from access to the resources they need to survive. If in any country there was a punishment for a crime where said, well, if you commit this horrible crime, we're going to starve you to death. Uh, that country would, uh, would be uh, considered a human rights violator and would be a pariah among nations. But yet, uh, there is something that's not even a crime that uh, we, make this, uh, we make this the punishment for, and that is uh, we will block access to the resources needed to survive for the poor and for the propertyless, and for the people who are fresh out of school. And if you, uh, you come out of school, you enter the working world, you have no property, then you have no access to the resources of the earth to use on your own terms, in your own way, to make your own living as you see fit. But you have to go and get a job and get someone's permission to access the resources of the earth was something that would have been foreign to all of our ancestors years ago, that you had need someone else's permission to work and do, and work becomes taking orders. There's nothing wrong with work if you choose it, but there is something wrong with work if you are forced into the position because other people interfere with what you could do on your own there's something wrong with being forced into the position where you have to do what you're told all day just to access the resources that you need to survive. This, um, and this is some freedom, this is something we could all do with the right access to resources, and it has been taken away. We are blocked from this. All of us, when we come out of school, unless we inherit an awful lot of money, are blocked from having access to the resources that we need to survive because everything else is owned. Things that you need for your life are owned by other people. And that just seems natural and ordinary to us, as, as foreign as it would have been to our ancestors. In some places in the world, our ancestors just a few generations ago. In other places, hundreds or thousands of years ago. But our ancestors would have been very unfamiliar with this, that you have to follow someone's orders all day to survive. But these, the resources have been blocked because other people own them. And it's not just private property rights that block you from owning stuff. The, uh, a socialist state can block you from the access to the resources just as much as a capitalist state can block you from access to resources. So the idea I'm proposing is called basic income, where you pay back for the property that you own. When you own property, what you're doing is you're imposing a duty on everyone else. Property is a duty. Property, to say this is mine, these resources are mine and not yours, is you're imposing a duty on everyone else in your country and saying these, these resources are mine, you cannot access them without their permission. You're imposing on a, du a duty on someone. And when you impose duties on someone, you should pay for them. Pay for the duties you impose on others and get paid for the duties that other people impose on you. And that's basic income, a system where you pay for what you own in taxes and then you receive back from those taxes. You receive a payment for everything that everyone else owns. Everyone simultaneously pays, everyone simultaneously receives. You pay for what you have, you receive back, you receive back from what you have. That is basic income. And I think we need to see this as a basic human right that everyone should have. Everyone should have this right of access to resources. And if we can't, and if you block people from access to resources, you simply 
pay back for that right. People say, well, what if you give this, if you give this right to everyone? What about incentives? What, what, what would happen to incentives if you had this sort of, uh, uh, this sort of system in place? And I, I care very much about incentives. And we've got an enormous incentive problem in our world today, and basic income will fix it. We've got this incentive problem where businesses don't have incentive to pay good wages. When you've got a workforce that has no access to the resources they need to survive, you can pay them very low wages. And you see this around the world. You see people who are working for a dollar a day and working for very low wages and working very long hours in poor working conditions because they have no other choice in how to make their living. And you see this even in prosperous countries. Something has gone wrong with the incentives in the United States where our country has grown enormously in terms of per capita GDP in the last 40 years, and a typical worker hasn't gotten a wage. That's an incentive problem, because businesses clearly don't have incentive to pay higher wages. Over 40 years and workers haven't gotten a wage, we need to do something to give those businesses an incentive to pay people better wages. And basic income can do that. Basic income can put the worker in a position where say, well, if you want me to work, pay me a good wage, and I will work. And that gives people incentives. And that's now, of course, when I bring up incentive, that's not usually what people think. I mean, when it's, well, what about the incentive for that person to work? But notice that. Why do we always look at that way? Why do we always say it is the worker who wants a higher wage who is the one who lacks incentive. So when you've got someone offering a job and someone saying, well, the wages aren't good enough for me to take that job, that is a dispute. Both need an incentive. Why do we always say, it's this guy's fault, he's lazy if we don't take it, when we know that there are workers working very long hours for very low pay around the world? When we get, we, we, we consider the workers have an incentive problem, we never think of the incentive problem here. This is a dispute. If we're always saying these poor are bad people because they won't take whatever jobs happen to be ordered, these are ones with the incentive problem, we're, in, we're taking a side in that dispute. Uh, and what we need to do is stop taking a side in that dispute and make sure everybody has their basic needs met. A certain small income, enough for necessities, so that uh, uh, is given to all whether they work or not, and a larger income given to those who are willing to engage in some work with the community finds useful. That is the idea of basic income. If you do that, then everyone enters this marketplace as a free person, a person who has the power to say no, and the power to say yes, and the power to make arrangements. And we all get this. This is basic income. Why should we have basic income? Well, because, because you deserve it. And as I've said, you've been blocked from access. If you're the, even if you're an extremely wealthy person, you own a lot of things, there's a lot more that you don't own. You've never been paid for the fact that somebody else owns all this other things in the earth. They pay back to you. You pay to them for what you own. You pay for the duties you impose on others. Other people pay for the duties you impose on them. The more you own, the more you pay. Every, the less you own, you, you receive. You all, we all receive the same for all those things that we don't own in the world. We have this because, because you deserve it. And we have this, we have this also because you want it. You want, if you want a, a cash income given to you on an individual basis, you, you want that. Everyone wants that. Everyone, wouldn't that be nice? I have cash coming in. I don't have to do anything. And I have cash coming in every day that I can use as I see fit. Everyone, admit, you know, we all want that. As a matter of fact, people do horrible things to try to get that income. Horrible things that people do. And they say, yeah, okay, yes, I want it. But something that sounds so nice that I want so bad, so it must be it must be wrong. It must be something bad. It must be bad about this. But actually, no. If you have this and you stand by within solidarity with everyone else in your community and say, it is my right to have this and I recognize it is your right to have this, not only do you get this nice income that you've always wanted, but you can also then have great side effects. You can live in a country where children don't grow up in poverty. You can live in a country where there will be fewer people having to go to an emergency room, 
because they're be, be, because of uh, because they're suicidal because they're having a mental breakdown. You have it. You have um, when you have less poverty, you have less mental problems. When you have less of the very severe poverty where people are 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 getting this. Are, are lacking their basic needs. You will have people attaining better education uh, because as children they have the time and effort to do this. All these great side effects happen when you say, yeah, I want this income, I want this as my right, and I see it as a right of every member of my community. That is, that is something that you have and you, and you should want. You say, well, um, well, this is property, and that's good, but what about the work ethic, people will say. Well, what about the work ethic? They'll say, um, the work ethic, everyone should work for what they get. Well, if you believe that everyone should work for what you get, then you got to take capitalism and throw it in the toilet, because that's not what capitalism is. Capitalism, a market economy, is about, about return on investment. Money gets you more money. People start out with owning property, they invest it, they get more money. Work does not have to be a part of it. Uh, you might have worked and paid for what you own, but you didn't pay the right people. Mostly, when you buy property, you're paying people who are done with it. You're paying people who have taken some resources of the earth, and hopefully they have improved them, but they've just taken those resources of the earth because the government says you own these resources of the earth, you own these resources, and you then get an income. You do not have to work with your property to make money out of it. Property works for you. That's the difference between a worker and an owner. A wor a wor an owner's property works for them, a worker works for their money. We're now at the position in this world where we can all be Owners. We can all own a little bit when our property works for us. You do not have to work to have property, and property cannot originate with work. Property originates when the legal system designates somebody as an owner. And it's time that we pay for that ownership back to the rest of the community. For what you take out from the community, you give back to the community, and you make your community stronger. You can still be rich, and you can still be an investor, and you can still do great things. There's so many great, good things that you can do with property. It's good to have a private space. But you should pay back. Pay back to what you have. Pay back to your neighbor for what they can't access of the resources of the earth because they are in your control, and receive that payment from them. So you have this system, and you support this system for your brethren in your community. And this is a, this then is, uh, this, this and, and the work ethic, well, people will say, well, what about the work ethic in the sense that you, that when you say you, you should work for what you get. Also, work is a strange concept in the world today because work doesn't mean what it used to. You would say uh, when uh, our ancestors, who might have been herders or hunters and hunter and gatherers, or hunter gatherers, would uh, go out and and work in the, for themselves and no one but themselves, you would say they're working. But now, what we mean by work is usually time spent making money, and you work for yourself and only yourself. If you were to go out and hunt, that's not work. You go out and fish, people say that's not work. You take care of your children, they say that's not work. Work for people without property means going into the office and taking orders from someone. And work for someone with property means maybe managing their resources and having uh, this make money on them. Uh, but work is not just following resources. If, uh, if work is not just... Uh, is not just following orders for someone for someone else so that they can give you money. Work is putting forth effort, uh, and it's not. Nor should we see this as natural as the only as the only form of work. Imagine if someone took property in the atmosphere. You don't realize we're using the atmosphere now the way our ancestors used the earth. We're taking what we need, and we're giving back what we're done with, uh, just the way our ancestors used the earth. And I think 
we'd all be pretty upset if some uh, entrepreneur came and appropriated the atmosphere that we're all using right now and say that they did something. Say, say they improved it. You know, that maybe they cleaned it up. Maybe they added some nice additive that made it very sweet when we breathe it or something. They could do all that. Of course, we'd all be in here choking. There's no air in this room. And then they said, okay, I will sell you the atmosphere back if you'll do some services for me, follow my orders. I think we'd be pretty upset. Well, if you pay me, uh, if, if my wages would be for my labor, what did I get for my lost access to the atmosphere? And you say, well, nothing, a job is not the, uh, a, a job is payment for my labor, it's not for my lost access to this. That's how we have to see these things. That's how we have to see it. I said, well, um, someone might say, well, with a work ethic, well, you have a work ethic, but you have, um, but still, our ancestors had to work for what they did. They had to work. They had to make effort. And you're saying, you're saying you should give people back in cash. Why should you give people back if, well, from what you take in the community in cash instead of the form of, in, in the form of jobs? Because compensation is always in cash. Um, if someone breaks your leg and you sue them and get compensation, uh, they don't give you a job. They give you cash. They give you cash because they have made it more difficult for you to do what you were doing before they were dated. Compensation is always in cash, uh, and it's simply not practical, practical to give everyone access to direct resources the way our ancestors had. Uh, but it is practical for us to pay back what we've taken. And basic income, really, even though you do no work to obtain your basic income, it is very much the opposite. It is very much the opposite of something for nothing. It is receiving something back for the duties that every other person has asked you to, asked you to respect all your life and you've never been paid for. It's very much the opposite of something for nothing. A system where you, where you pay for what you own and you get paid for what you don't own. That's basic income, and we need to see that as a fundamental human right that everyone else needs. Thank you very much.